So I'm just down at the post office delivering my 2,800th sale item of the year. We've been able to do $107,000 in revenue on eBay selling pre-owned items. And it's really had me reflecting over the last few days for what has been one of the busiest years I've ever had. Things didn't get off to a great start though. On January 1, literally the first day of the year, I got COVID and that knocked me out for about a week. I was still chipping away at home, working on my eBay, listing up a couple of items that I had lying around the house. And I was still producing videos on YouTube because I just thought I couldn't miss an upload. What actually developed after about a week's worth of COVID was I copped shingles as well. And the videos still kept coming. I had these horrible marks and horrible just growths on my face. Uh, from shingles and it was incredibly painful as well. A bunch of medication for the next six weeks and yet I continued with my eBay business and I continued making YouTube videos. I was absolutely adamant that no matter how I felt, I just had to keep making content and listing items up for sale. It was one of the toughest starts to the year I've ever had. January and February was brutal, but we moved into March and things definitely picked up. <music> So a large part of my sourcing this year has come out of thrift stores and we've had our first little run today which is pretty much the last of the year. Um, I've got these which were awesome, these Brooks. These are the Glycerin uh, 19s and they were in really good nick and the price was some of the cheapest you'll see in these op shops, certainly where I am, $6. Uh, they're usually upwards of 20 so to find them that, that cheap was awesome. There was so much Lego in that thrift store that we were just in. And I've come away with the Speed Champions um, brand new set. That one should go for upwards of maybe 60 to 70 bucks. And I've just paid the 24 it. You can always rely on brand new and sealed, obviously. You just don't come across it too much in thrift stores. So that was pretty epic. Um, there was one video game, which was a good one. It was Black Ops 2. This was six bucks. It was a steel case. So that was pretty cool to find. Uh, it had the manual as well, which you want to always look for. And then there was a couple of DVDs that just comped out to be pretty good. I'm always playing over $15 in value. The Americans, this is season five. That one should go for about $15, which is the lowest I'll always uh, try to grab. And then this one here, Monarchy, the Royal Family at Work. Now, obviously the Queen has recently passed away. There was a spike in value for a comp at around $40. I don't think I'm gonna get $40 for this one here, but I should be able to get maybe 15 to 20 bucks. So to pay four, to turn it into 15 to 20, you're gonna do that every single time. So not a, not a bad little start to the day. A few items were underway. Once I was starting to feel a little bit better towards the end of February, February, March, April, and May was dedicated towards trying to save up an $8,000 budget to be able to fund a trip to the USA, a thrift trip, a 10 day trip that I was really hoping to be able to go on. Now, I did that by publishing a trip to the thrift video every single Thursday on this channel, showing the best finds in all my local thrift stores. There's a link in the description below if you have missed any of that series, uh, but we were able to save up $8,000. It was a very successful four month period. Uh, some of the best finds in there was definitely the Ice Road Truckers DVD set that I found in a pawn shop. I bought it for about $20 and it turned into over $400 worth of sales. So. That series was so much fun to make and it was a real dedicated focus over a good three to four month period. But with it, we were able to get over to the USA. I was also lucky enough to land my first ever brand deal on this channel and funnily enough, they are the sponsor of today's video, EcoFlow. A few weeks ago, the guys at EcoFlow sent me this. It's an EcoFlow River portable power station and this thing is a beast. If you're into camping or hiking or just a day at the beach, EcoFlow makes it pretty easy with this portable power station for you to be powered up and connected at all times. They also have solar panels available, which is designed to be efficient, durable, and easy to install. So whether it's during a power outage or just to save money on your monthly energy bill, EcoFlow has you covered. One of the things I love most about this one is that it is super lightweight and durable. I can take this thing anywhere and it's very easy to use. There's also nine different power outlets, so you can be charging up to nine devices at any one time, which I think is pretty crazy. It's also the world's fastest charging power station as well. You can get this from zero to 80% charged in just an hour. 
So, if you want to get your hands on one of these guys, which I highly recommend you do, check out the link in my description below for all the details, and there's even some really cool savings for the Christmas period as well. So this really was the highlight of my year. To be able to make enough money, to be able to go over to the USA for a 10 day thrift trip was just so much fun. And to be able to meet some really cool people as well. I caught up with Art, The Art of Resale. He's got an awesome YouTube channel. While I was in Vegas, I went to a YouTube conference to just learn how to make better videos. And I also caught up with Art and we went out thrifting and found some pretty crazy items. I then flew across to the East Coast and I caught up with Josh and Haley, Harry Tornado. Uh, in South Carolina, and they were so accommodating for my stay over there for a few days. And uh, we went out to their local flea market where they make a lot of fun videos, and it was just surreal to be over, the, over there making uh, a video with them. But to be able to do that, to be able to have the goal to save up the money and then to go over there and punch out seven videos in just 10 days, it was just a whirlwind of excitement, and I was able to bring back and, and sell $5,000 worth of stock buying 120 items. So when you look at the numbers, it was just such a worthwhile experience and a worthwhile trip, and I'm gonna be doing it again next year. I'm gonna try and save up enough money to go back, maybe even for a little bit longer, and it'd be cool to link up with a, a few more resellers while I'm over there. Add it up. Clothing hasn't been a massive focus in 2022, but there was one item today that did catch my eye. It was a brand new with tags. Pearl Azumi is the brand. Now, this is a cycling brand, guys, and these are a pair of women's uh, Quest cycling shorts, and they go for about 40 bucks. So brand new condition. Like I said, you can't go wrong. Uh, pick them up for 12. They should do it right. Then I found this. Will I be able to have a look at the, um, is it Humphrey B. Bear in the... I haven't seen him in a very long time. <laughs> he brings back a lot of childhood I memories. Think he does. <laughs> it's amazing, isn't it, the things you remember? I know. Oh, how cool is that? That's I don't epic. Know how much 1965. 1965? Or something like that. Wow. Date on the tag? 1965. Yeah. Yeah, so it would have had to have been made before then, or around about then at least. Wow. How much is he? I think only $20 on I'll take him. Good idea. Can't say no to that. <laughs> How cool. So you just don't see it often. I couldn't pass this up for $20. A Humphrey B. Bear plush toy from 1965, Southern TV Corp. That is just an absolute cracking find. It's the reason why I love to go out to the thrift. You just never know what you're going to find. Um, the next part, the minute I go back from the States, I was actually straight into gear with buying my first ever property. So this was a really daunting time. Anyone that's ever bought their first home just knows how much stress goes into it. But when you're trying to run your own business and you've only just got back from the States, uh, there was so much on my plate during the middle part of the year. It, we settled in July and before you knew it, I was moving my eBay business from mum and dad's place into my new place. And I was able to occupy two of the rooms. One was the garage. I completely renovated the garage into an eBay office. So all of my stock moved across into the office, into the garage. And then I also had a third bedroom that I turned into a YouTube studio. So I do all of my editing up in the third bedroom and I've really kind of put all my favorite things in there. I've got my Pokemon cards, got all my action figures, some Funko Pops, Workaholics and uh, Blink-182, my favorite band. So I've really tried to customize that room to be mine, my little sanctuary where I can just go ahead and edit my videos. And then everything eBay related is downstairs. All the stock that I'm trying to sell, my listing table, my box lights, that's all down there. So there's really two different parts to the house. But now that I'm finally in, and I've been in for six months, it was one of the best purchases I've ever made. Yes, the property market is always up and down and you never know when you should be purchasing. But the fact that I've now got my own spot and I can grow my business out of it, has been very, very excited for the years to come. I've had 
a very good year selling hats on eBay, guys. I think it is the most underrated category. You need to be paying attention to the dirty old hat bins in your thrift stores because you can pull away some gems. This one should go for about $20 to $25. The footy boots, another really good category that I've found this year. Uh, look, these ones here, I think are pretty decent. This thrift store that I'm in is notoriously cheap. Um, so I'm only actually paying $3 for these footy boots, which is just fantastic. Not too bad of a size there, US size 8. And I've also got these that should easily go for about $50. The Lethal RS ASICS uh, men's footy boots. So they are an absolute ripping pair. Pretty good size on them too. So there might be about $90 in the shoes, about $20 in the hat. $110, and I only paid the $10 to get my hands on it. It hasn't all been easy though. The toughest part about this year has been the isolation element to just working for yourself and being your own boss and being the sole determinant upon how your business goes. I've not been able to bounce any ideas off anybody. Uh, I've been kept up in this garage all by myself for the entirety of the year and even up in the third bedroom editing videos. It's just an isolating job and I'm a very extroverted sort of a personality, which is the reason why I've obviously got this YouTube channel. It's a bit of an outlet for me to just be able to express myself because if I wasn't talking to camera, my day to day, I wouldn't really be talking to anybody. And that's just not the way I like to operate. So that's been really tough to deal with throughout the year. And it actually made me put into gear the next step of the year, which was trying to connect and meet some of you guys that are a part of the channel. So I went to Melbourne and I did a big thrift trip down there. I made three YouTube videos and we held the very first ever reseller meetup event and we had about 25 people turn up to that and it was awesome we met up at a pub there was no formalities to it it was just to say hello and have a chat and it was so nice to meet people that have been watching the channel for quite a period of time a friend of mine was also getting married over in western australia so i took the opportunity to head over there and do a reseller meetup event and we went out to a few thrift stores as well and found some pretty cool stuff given the success of western australia and victoria for the reseller meetup events I think it's something that I'm going to continue again in 2023. Let me know in the comments where I should go next. Definitely been a pretty successful day out thrifting, guys. All the stuff that I usually like to get and sell. I think the Humphrey B. Bear was just the most nostalgic find of, well, at least the first, last couple of months anyway. Uh, this Lego Speed Champions is probably the best find of the day. That one will sell for about $50 to $60, and I just paid the $20. Uh, some really good brand new cycling shorts. All of these uh, DVDs and video games selling for $15+. Plus. I should get 20 for the hat, and these footy boots and shoes should average about $40 each. So you could comfortably say about $350-odd worth of value in this lot, and I've only paid $80 to get my hands on it. So $100,000 in revenue was definitely a goal in 2022, so it's really exciting to have surpassed that with still even just a couple of weeks left to go in the year. I think there's three main habits that has allowed me to get to that number. If it's a goal for you for next year, these three have definitely helped me this year. First one would be to just having sourced better quality items. I now put a lot more time into searching for sell-through rate and obviously a desirable item, which in the past I would grab those low-hanging fruit items that wouldn't really cause me to have to invest a lot of money, but I would find that they just sit for months on end. I don't really do that so much anymore. I mean, today I was out for three hours and I only came away with 10 items. Sure, I could have bought a whole heap more, but they weren't going to necessarily go on to sell in a quick time frame for a good profit. So I'm often starting to spend more money on a better desirable item than I would have previously in the past. And that just comes down to experience. That Humphrey B. Bear today, if I choose to sell it, putting $20 into it might net me a $60 revenue sale, which is still gonna give me some significant profit. In the past, I may have passed on an item like that. Now I know that the vintage collectible items have a pretty good sell-through rate. So it's those little bits and pieces that you learn along the way. So just make sure you are focusing on sell-through rate. Make sure you're focusing on buying great items and leaving those typical bread and butter items that aren't going to generate too much of a profit uh, by the wayside. The other one as well is postage is first. Postage truly is king. You've got to make sure that you're getting your items out as quickly as you possibly can. If you can make a same-day shipping model uh, work for you in your own life predicaments of what you, whatever you've got going on, I think that will improve your eBay business dramatically. Regardless of how many listings you do each day, if you're just shipping out your item on a, on a same day level, um, then I think you'll go on to make some pretty good sales throughout the year. I swapped to that a little bit earlier this year and I've seen significant growth uh, as a result of prioritizing my postage. It's the first thing that I do every single day. And then the other one as well is consistency compounds. It's a pretty boring term and you hear it all the time, but I've just done it all year, every single day. I'm at the post office 
by lunchtime every single day. And I'm just doing all the little things that you need to do consistently, which has compounded into $100,000 worth of revenue and provided me with a full-time income, which I'm pretty proud of. So they're the three keys, I believe, to get to that $100,000 on eBay. Buy good items, ship them out quick, and just do it every day. Seems pretty simple, but when you actually go into putting the work, it is pretty difficult as well. So you just gotta maintain that level of effort, level of consistency, and you definitely will get there. Thank you very much for all of your support in 2022, guys. It has been incredibly motivating for me to wanna to keep making videos, knowing that you're on the other end of it, tuning in. So thank you very much for your support. Enjoy the Christmas break, enjoy the New Year's period, and I'll catch you in the new year. See you guys.